Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my vlog. I'm Robin or Hobbit Treating List. This week we are, hi Nala. <laughs> we are going to finish a book. I did not finish a book last week. I barely finished a book the week before. Well, no, I did finish a book last week, but it had been so long. Like we, we're just gonna finish a book. Maybe we're gonna finish two, wouldn't that be amazing? Let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I have read quite a bit, not maybe as much as I would like. So if you've been watching my vlogs for a while, you have realized that I overestimate a lot, like a lot, almost every video I overestimate how much I'm able to accomplish. I did get a good chunk of reading done, but I, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll finish a book today and just like start off strong. And I'm like, I, I don't know why I put that thought in my head because it didn't happen. And I'm not like, I'm not disappointed. I'm not bummed or, or anything like that. It's just like, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> so I read a chapter of The Annotated Hobbit. I'm far enough in the book that like, if I just read a chapter a day for the rest of the month, I'll finish it. Uh, and, and the reason I'm doing that for anyone who didn't watch last week's vlog or the week before that <laughs> is just because like I do enjoy The Hobbit. Obviously my channel is named after me being a hobbit. So I, I do enjoy the book, but since this, this is annotated, it has a lot of background information that really slows down my like typical reading speed that I would have when reading The Hobbit. So. I just decided to like read a little bit every day so that I wasn't massively slowing down the rest of my TBR. Uh, my, my mental health does that. <laughs> so I did read a chapter. They are, I just read the Mirkwood chapter. So they're, they're now captured by the Elven King and yeah. So I, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning a lot about like where Tolkien got his uh, like influences for The Hobbit and everything. So I think that's really cool. And then once I did that, I had a little bit of lunch and then I set up the hammock in the backyard and I read more of A Ghost in the Throat by Dorian the Grifa, which is a, I guess memoir is the best word for it. It's not fiction. It, it's about the author's, she calls it an obsession with this poet from like the late 1700s whose name is Eileen Dove Nicono, I believe, maybe? That's as close as I think I'm gonna get. Uh, it's an Irish name. I really struggle with pronouncing Irish names. I'm impressed I'm able to get the author's name out fairly decently well. So, <laughs> But while the author is uh, essentially like she's a stay-at-home mom, she's raising four kids under the age of six, which sounds just exhausting to me. Uh, she sort of copes with this like obsession with Eileen Dove, uh, which is kind of what it's shortened to. And the the poem that she's known for, which is the Keen for Art O'Leary. Obviously it sounds better in Irish, <laughs> but it's just, it's really cool about how their stories sort of like intersect and the amount of like research she's doing to understand more ab about this poet and what she must have had experienced. And, and it's so, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I have about 
I want to say like 150 pages left. I'm a little over halfway, but I do know that like the last 30 or so pages is the actual like poem that she's obsessed with. So that'll like fly by really quick. So I think I have like maybe like 120-ish pages of the actual book left. I'm going to keep reading it tonight, but I wanted to like, you know, film my vlog, not forget. <laughs> so yeah, but it was, it was a good time. I, I spent about like three hours in the hammock. Obviously I wasn't reading that whole time. Otherwise I would have made way more progress. <laughs> but hey, this is, this, I'm in my ADD era. It is going strong and not that I, I'm not in that era all the time. But it's really it's kicking my butt lately, which is super fun. So I'm hoping, I'm not saying this is an expectation, but I'm hoping to have a Ghost in the Throat finished by Thursday. I think that's possible. No idea what I'm going to read next. I'm terrified that when I ask Siri to pick a book, uh, she's going to pick what's the Mr. Jingle Bells or something which is like literally 400 pages and I, <laughs> I pretty much accepted at this point that I'm gonna have another consequence book like I'm not going to complete this TBR <sighs> which really sucks I yeah that's the part that's disappointing like I want to make more of a dent in my physical TBR especially because I keep buying books <laughs> which makes it really hard to feel like I'm making a dent but you know what if I finish seven books this month I'll be happy that's my average so let's just let's just see what what we can do <laughs> So I think it's been a couple days, but I don't think that much has happened reading wise. Uh, I've been pretty busy at work, story of my life, <laughs> work is getting in the way of things that I actually want to do. So I did, this is hard because I don't remember last, what my last update was. Well, I know for sure that I finished reading Maurice by Ian e. Forster. Uh, I finished it last night. Uh, Ian Forster wrote Maurice in, I believe, the 1920s. I could be wrong, but it wasn't published until after he died in like 1971 because he worried about what it would mean for like his other books and his reputation because it, it is a queer love story with a happy ending. So yeah, so he, he worried, you know, what it would do. So he, he published after he died, so he didn't have to deal with it, which is fair. <laughs> I ended up giving it four stars. I did really enjoy it. Uh, I felt like it was like, my main issue is the pacing. And like, if you've been watching my vlogs, if you've been watching my wrap up videos, like you have realized that I like happy endings. And I realize there are some booktubers who want to be as like destroyed as possible and don't mind like ambiguous endings and stuff like that. I am not one of those people. I want clear cut, happy ending that makes me go like, aww. <laughs> Maurice didn't quite have that. And I, I realize that like the story is about Maurice like and his journey with accepting that he is a gay man and so it starts out from when he's like 14 and getting like the sex talk from a teacher <laughs> uh, of course it's only heterosexual sex <laughs> and goes to when he goes to public school and he meets this guy named Durham and they end up falling in love and then a couple years down the line that relationship ends and how Maurice deals with it and then he meets another guy and then they enter into a relationship and then the book ends. And so like, I know it ends on a, like, a happy note, but we didn't get a lot of time with this second romance, this, this happy ending. We didn't get a lot of time with it. Uh, and so like, that's just a little unsatisfying in my opinion. It was still beautifully written. And especially the way that Maurice felt when 
the first relationship was ending, it was like, I was like, oh, I've been there, my dude. Because <laughs> for whatever reason, queer relationships just feel so different, or at least mine did. My, my relationships with people who identify as female feel completely different from relationships I've had with the opposite sex. And when those relationships ended, like they felt so like, so destroying that I, I could really relate to how Maurice felt. So yeah, I, I still feel like it was, it was really good. It was so well written. The pacing was a little interesting, um, which I think speaks to what I was saying about like how the happy ending was like somewhat unsatisfying. It was still really good. Like I still highly recommend it. So yeah, I, I was totally stupid. As I was coming downstairs to film, I was like, oh, I should ask Siri what my next audiobook should read should be. Uh, I have enough time to listen one, and I totally forgot. Whoops! <laughs> Just like as soon as I entered to another room, that thought was gone. So I have, I believe, three options. One of them is Mr. Jingle Bells, which I, <laughs> I want to read it but it's also like 450 pages. And that's just, like part of me is like, I, d I do this thing, right? Where I over-exaggerate what I can accomplish. And I'm like, well, maybe if the next audiobook is short enough, I can like start a second one and that will count as my TBR. I'm not gonna have time. I have like, I have tomorrow, I'm going to Chicago Saturday. So I have Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday. I have a week. It took me a week to listen to Maurice, which is under seven hours. Part of that is because like my mood would just not let me focus some days, but like I, I'm not gonna have enough time <laughs> to start another, to start a second audiobook. I know this. And yet my brain is like, well, we shouldn't start listening to the long one because we definitely like won't have time to end. Like, not gonna have time. So anyway, <laughs> one of the options is Mr. Jingle Bells. Um, the other option is Best Lesbian Erotica from 2009. I don't know why there's an audiobook of this, but there is. And then what do I have left? I know that Atlas of Middle Earth isn't an audiobook. Quick service, I'm not listening to an audiobook because I need to take notes. Oh, um, Spellbound is also on audio. So any one of those three would be fine. Um, I would probably prefer Spellbound because it was a book that was recommended to me. And so I want to read it like as soon as possible. But if I don't get to it, like I'll just put it in the next one. I don't know. <laughs> so those are my options. Uh, don't know which one Siri will pick, but I'll let you know the next time I film because I'll know by then. Yeah, I think honestly that's all I've read. I'm like really trying to rack my brain because I think I filmed Tuesday morning. Maybe. If not, I filmed Monday night. <laughs> if I filmed Monday night, I did read more of A Ghost in the Throat by Dorian DeGriffa. And I believe I have like a hundred pages left. I'm going to try to finish it today. That'd be sweet, right? If I finally finished two books in one week. <laughs> and uh, obviously make more progress on The Hobbit. But I do have a lot of other stuff I have to do. I have therapy today, I have personal training, I have to work out, I have, you know, my writing date tonight, I have to edit the YouTube video that's coming out tomorrow, hey! Uh, yeah, so I have a lot to do, so we'll see how much reading I can accomplish, and I will check in with you guys later.
so today is Friday. The, the hardest part about vlogging for me is remembering what I did. Like, what what's the last thing that you saw? And I, I could look at my, you know, videos and, and remember, but that's too easy. <laughs> I don't take the easy way. Yesterday, I sat outside and I read about three chapters of The Hobbit. So now we are at Erebor and they just opened the, the secret door. So Bobo's about to go in. That's very exciting. <laughs> it's been so long since I've read The Hobbit that I'm like, I'm just really enjoying this. Where I'm like, ooh, this is different from the movie and this is different from the movie. Because I, I don't remember if I've read The Hobbit since the movies came out. Just because it's so much easier to watch the movies, but like I'm really enjoying the book. And all the, you know, little annotations are just like a, a behind the scenes look. So it's, I'm having a good time. I will not be reading The Hobbit today because I'm going to uh, a pool party at a friend's house. Well, party I think is, is no exaggeration. I found out yesterday that he only told, he only told me and Chris about this like pool party. So I'm like, so it's just the four of us hanging out at your pool. It's not, it's not really a party, but okay. <laughs> I also did read about a chapter and a half of A Ghost in the Throat yesterday. I usually, like, I I really hate stopping in the middle of chapters, but I started reading the next chapter like 30 minutes before my writing date last night. And then I realized that I still had like, that this chapter is like 40 pages long, which is significantly longer than any other chapter in the book. <laughs> so I had to stop. And I just didn't come back to it last night because I had to edit the video that came out today. Nala is now up here and demanding my attention. Hi. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Yes, you're such a good girl. When she's being nice. She's only nice when she wants attention. Otherwise, she's kind of a bully. Mainly to the boys. You know, it's it's hard being the only girl in the house. Isn't it, Nala? Yes. Thank you. Now she's grooming me. I kind of wish it was more up here. No? All right. She's camera shy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good girl. Yes, you're a good girl. Are you gonna? Yes, thank you. <laughs> she, whenever I come home, the dining room table, which is where I am at right now, is like the catch all. And so all my stuff is here. And so she's usually like waiting on the dining room table for when I come home so that we can headbutt. <laughs> and it's like one of the highlights of coming home. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, this is cute as shit. Uh, I'll have to try to record it sometime. But, so yeah, I was reading Ghost in the Throat. <laughs> uh, it's starting to wrap up. She's been trying to like piece together the rest of Eileen's life after she wrote the poem. Like, like nothing else is known about this poet. Like what we know is that, you know, she met her husband, they got married despite her family's wishes. And then like, I think it was like a decade later, maybe not even a decade, he ended up being murdered and she found his body and wrote this, they call, I believe it's called a keen, sort of outlining everything that happened and then she disappears. And so Dorian was trying to piece together like what happened. And so we're sort of wrapping up on that journey. I think I have about, I have about 40 pages of the actual book left. And then I know that the last 30 pages in the book are the actual keen of Art O'Leary. So I, I'm really excited to read it all because I've just been getting like bits and pieces. So yeah, so, and I, I'm gonna take this to work with me because I actually have a couple of breaks and so maybe I can finish it. <laughs> and I will also be starting the Best of Lesbian Erotica 2009 on audiobook because that's what Siri picked out. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna go listening to, uh, to uh, Erotica while I'm driving to and from work. We'll see how that, we'll see how that goes. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> I 
I finished reading A Ghost in the Throat, and I'm going to make this quick because it's a little windy and I don't want the sound to be, like, absolutely horrible, but it's just so nice outside. <laughs> I gave it five stars. I think it was beautifully written. I think it does an amazing job portraying the, like, obsession that you can get with history and the people that were actual people. They're not just, like, names in a book. Um, I know that I've experienced that level of, of obsession of like, I need to know everything I can about this person. I went through a phase in high school where like my entire senior year I was obsessed with Anne Boleyn. Uh, so I get it. Like it, it was so cool to just read about, you know, this poet who was essentially lost or the only reason we know her name is, is because of this poem and, and everything else is just gone and you know Dorian Negrifa found as much information as she could and, and you can tell she put in a lot of work and I, I appreciated the bits of Dorian's life that was in the book as well I thought it was really interesting so yeah I I really liked it I love when poets write books because it's just it's just so beautifully written so yeah definitely a five star <laughs> which is which is nice because I haven't had five star in like a little bit <laughs> so now that that's done I will continue reading the annotated hobbit but I have to pick up quick service by PG Woodhouse that's the next Woodhouse book I have to read so that'll probably be my last book of the month uh, quite honestly which kind of sucks it's not as many books as I would have liked but it's okay. I also did start listening to The Best Lesbian Erotica of 2009. I only listened to two stories. They were lesbian erotica. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to talk about it. I feel awkward driving while listening to Smut, but not, not neither of them were, like, super, you know. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I was just like, all right, I had to listen to it, like a little turned down because like I have hearing problems and I don't know what other people can hear, especially if I'm like at a stoplight. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's that's sort of what's going on. I have just a little bit more work to do, and then I'm going to a friend's house for like a little evening pool party, which should be a lot of fun. So, I'll check with you guys in a bit. I didn't film like anything yesterday so on Friday after I talked to you guys I went to a friend's house to swim and we ended up swimming until like 10 30 at night so I didn't really get any more reading done I did listen to the best lesbian erotica of 2009 I also listened to another two hours of it yeah Saturday I didn't film anything Saturday because that was the only thing I read I didn't read any more of the Annotated Hobbit. I didn't start quick service, but I did get two more hours of Best Lesbian Erotica because I went to Chicago to meet up with a friend and go watch this like comedy music thing called Paper Machete. And uh, it was really funny. It was sort of similar vibes of like SNL of like, they had like comedy bits, not quite sketches, but like, some you know, like five minutes of stand-up or, or five minutes of like puppetry and then they would have like a musical intermission of like two or three songs and then would go back to comedy and it would just sort of bounce back and forth for like two hours it was a lot of fun I had a really good time and then I came back home <laughs> and I didn't listen to more of the audiobook on my way to work but I did on my way home so as of right now, I believe I have like three hours left. And as usual on Sundays, I'm starting to notice this pattern of like my eyes just get really dried out. I don't know why. Like it's only Sundays. The rest of the week, my eyes are totally fine. I'm so confused by it. So I'm pretty much not accomplishing anything else tonight. I'll just, I'll read the Annotated Hobbit and try to get caught up as much as I can, just like last week. <laughs> 
but I, I'm bouncing like back and forth between like so many different books right now. I'm so sorry. My brain is just like, oh yeah, I have to mention this. I have to mention this. I have to mention this. Huh. Uh, <laughs> so Best Lesbian Erotica 2009. It's short stories. They're all smutty. They're, <laughs> there's only women in them, which honestly is kind of refreshing. <laughs> Uh, I like some more than others, you know, as is typical, I think, for a short story collection. Overall, I'm, I am enjoying it. I have no idea how I'm going to rate it in Cop Pile. Book Roast, you know, created Cop Pile, and she gives you this, like, handy way of, like, sort of figuring out what your score is for each category of Cop Pile, whether it's fiction or if it's nonfiction. She doesn't have one for short stories. So I don't quite know how I'm going to rate that when I finish it probably tomorrow because I, I am driving to Chicago again tomorrow <laughs> because we're doing this uh, trans resiliency Havdala, uh, which sounds like really interesting, and really cool. And I'm really excited to go and it will get me more time in the car. So I'll finish Best Lesbian Erotica of 2009. I don't know what I will listen to next. I'm thinking about starting one of the other two audiobooks that I have left for my TBR. I won't finish it by the first, but I will get majority done depending on which one it is. If it's Mr. Jingle Bells, Mr. Jingle Bells I believe is about nine hours and Spellbound is... So I have the camera propped up on the cat tree and Bash just jumped up on the cat tree not realizing it's a very precarious situation he's about to knock the camera off okay uh and Spellbound is like I think about like 10 and a half or 11 so I don't know we'll see I'm not filming my DVR until Thursday so mm. <laughs> we'll see uh yeah so that's where what's going on I don't really have much my eyes are really just like killing me right now I am going to go ahead and wrap it up just because, like, Chris will be home in, like, an hour. I don't know how much I'll get done reading of The Hobbit, but I will check in with you guys in the next one. So, like the video if you liked it. Comment. Let me know if you've read A Ghost in the Throat because I really enjoyed it. And I want to talk about it with other people. <laughs> but uh, let me know if you have any thoughts about what my next audio book should be. Should I just, like pick up a random one or should I go ahead and continue with one of the two that I've left on my list that I won't finish it before the first who knows tell me let me know subscribe I'd really appreciate it click the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will check you guys in the next one bye